Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. If you're interested in learning how to uh, install a floor pan inside this 73 Ford Mustang convertible, stick around. This is gonna be a two part series, so this is the first part of part one. Thank you. Here's the floor pan we're going to put in. Uh, I bought this many years ago. I think it's a Dynacorn. Um, so let's take a look at what we're going to. So let's take a look at what we're going to do here. Okay. So so a couple of things. You'll notice I've already installed the passenger side one. Uh, I'm still going to do some finishing up on it, some grinding down of the welds, but for the most part, it's there. I didn't install the, the seat bracket or support and install that yet and just kind of want to clean it up and put it in. Uh, we look at the driver's side over here. Well, it's a little rusty, but it doesn't look too bad, I guess. But I was actually looking at the, the rear uh, floor here and it looks like this has been replaced before. And I don't think it's with the proper, proper floor, probably just from some other car. I don't know which one. And I can kind of tell because when I'm looking over here, I can actually see kind of a seam right so somebody's welded in this and there's actually a piece of wire right there i don't know if you could see it looks like a piece of wire from a mig and then if i come along here you actually see there it is there as well so i'm going to cut this whole thing out also when i look at the seat here at the seat platform normally what happens is you get the floor pan is put in and then the seat platform is spot welded on top of it right so this person whoever did the patch welded that on top of the seat platform so uh, I'm going to cut this out and try and uh, salvage this seat pan here. Um, what else? The driver's side, again, when you initial looks, doesn't look that bad, but somebody put a plate. This is a plate right here, and they welded it right on top of the seat platform, right? Uh, so I got to do a lot of cleaning up over here uh, and whatnot. You can actually see there's the, the edge of the seat platform, and then the metal's welded on top. So I got to... Uh, cut out all this stuff and try and find where the spots welds are and clean them all up. Uh, again, you got the, um, um, again, the, the uh, sealant over here. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> doesn't matter, it's, it's escaping me right now. Um, but anyways, it was, uh, you have the seam sealer. There we go. So I guess that's the factory seam sealer. So I'm going to take that off. I'll see some spot welds here. When I look over here on this side, you can kind of see... If I like, uh, see if I can get the camera in here. You can kind of see right where my finger is. There's a spot weld there. There's a spot weld there. There's a spot weld there. So, like I was saying, uh, these spot welds here, right? And you can usually see them a lot better if you just get your grinder and you grind this down. They'll they'll be like the, the recessed parts. So they'll be darker, right? So uh, I'm gonna remove those. And how do I do that? I uh, usually use a punch, a center punch, a nice sharp one. I'll find the center of the uh, spot weld, or there about. Give it a nice whack, and then use my trusty drill. I don't know what size that is. It might, might be an eighth inch or whatever. I'll drill in. I won't drill all the way through. I just uh, I'll drill a bit so there's a a bit of a, a concaveness there. And then I actually use this um, spot weld remover. I've seen uh, you know. Um, the, the point here actually goes down it's a little sharp <laughs> but anyways uh, the trick with these things um, is take it easy nice and slow don't crank the drill right up just nice and slow give it some lubrication with some kind of oil and then we'll usually cut through that stuff pretty nice okay um, now there's other stuff before I start just hacking away at this the stuff I have to deal with underneath so why don't we do this why don't we lift up the Vehicle up on the hoist, get a little bit higher, and we'll take a look at under, underneath. So ready? One, two, three. Okay, we're back. That was quick for you guys. All right, so let's take a look at what we got to deal with underneath, right? You can see over there, I got the, the replacement one in. I still got to do some finishing up and cleaning and stuff like that. Uh, but you'll see, um, I've got my gas line right here. So I'm not going to start hacking away at that. I want to replace it, but I want to take it down and then use it as a template for later on, right? 
Uh, I'm gonna have to deal with this. This is the parking brake. Um, obviously, it looks like there's this piece here is welded into the floor. So I'm gonna have to probably remove that or disconnect it as well. And uh, this is where it comes in from. I'm gonna have to kind of mess around with that. I'll know a little bit more once I go in here. You'll see I've got my got the frame here. You can tell that there's a, that's a replacement pan right there. Somebody threw in. Kind of tell over here as well. Uh, for those of you that have the 71, 72, 73 Mustangs or Mach 1s or Grandes, uh, you won't have this. Um, this is this came on the convertibles. I guess I had extra support brackets for the convertible since there's no roof. So I guess it needs to add a bit of rigidity to it. Um, what else is there I got to deal with? Quite possibly. Um, Looks like I've got brake lines up there that might get in my way. It may not. I think I might be able to get around that. Uh, but there's a couple of things there. So that's basically uh, that's basically it. Um, I'm going to start uh, removing the gas lines and cutting out the uh, the, the pans and, and whatnot. And then um, actually, sorry, I'll remove the seat bracket first, and then we'll take it from there. So. Uh, I'll, I'll be back when I got that removed. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Uh, looks like the gas line's out. Uh, a couple rusty bolts, but actually it's in really good shape, to be honest with you, but I'm going to replace it anyways. So a couple of things that I noticed. All right. So back in here. Uh, so the seat bracket or, or whatever uh, over here, it's actually welded, not spot welded, right? So there's actually welds there. Uh, I think that's factory because it was like that on the passenger side as well. Over here now, you can see the spot welds, right? Now I've obviously used my center punch, then I used a, a drill, right? Good old drill. And I kind of just drilled into it a little bit, right? Um, now I'm gonna use my spot weld remover tool. I got this on Amazon. Um, like I said, this is not too bad. I'll, I'll leave a link for it in the, in the description. So my game plan is to take this out. In order for me to do this, I got to hack up this part of the board pan and hack up over here as well, the front part of the, the floor pan. And this seam for the seat bracket, again, is spot welded to that bracket down below, right? Um, so it's going to probably be a little bit of fun for me to separate that, but I won't know any well, I won't know any better until I start getting into this thing, right? And I can't see where the spot welds are here because this pan was replaced. So there's supposed to be spot welds connecting to the to the frame here. Uh, there's a frame coming across this way and another one up here, right? Um, so I'm going to have to just cut some of it from below, from up top, keep it kind of clean. Now, back here, when I go to start cutting, how much do I cut off, right? And that's always a good question. You can always lay the pan inside, the replacement pan inside the vehicle um, and mark it out. But I can't do that right now because of the seat pans there or seat brackets there. So when I look at the back here, I see there's this curve and then there's some part of the floor there. Then there's a part over here where we come and I know that that's a lap joint. Okay, so there'll be spot welds here. So if I go back and I look at that vehicle now and I actually see the curve portion, so it comes up to about here roughly. Sort of like what you can tell with this little part that I did here, right? Um, so I'll cut it out at the top of this curve. It leaves me lots of space to do a butt joint, right? Um, then um, when it comes to the, to the side part now, when it comes to here, you see this square little indentation? That's for the seat belt, right? So I've kind of got a good amount of information up here, so I'm not going to cut too far. What I'll probably do, if I come back to here, here we go, is I'm going to remove this. There's that seat belt thing I was mentioning before, right? So I'm not even going to get anywhere near that. I'll probably cut along here, way down, way down in here, way down in here. But once I get this out, I'll be able to lay that pan in, mark a line, and I know exactly where I got to go, right? The other thing I want to point out, Notice the floor pan here comes up to, there we go, there's the, that's the floor right there. So there's a crease right there, and then this is an extension, a floor extension going up to the firewall, right? Sort of like 
what's on the passenger side. And I kind of try to keep that. Now, if you look here, see that with the passenger side floor pen, you actually see here's this part that goes straight up right here. So I think the crease is somewhere around here. So I may cut this off. I'll know better once I dig into that, see how much metal is good and how much metal is bad and kind of take it from there. But apart from that, uh, the next time you should see this, I should have that seat pan out and part of the floor gouged out or cut out. Uh, and that's about it here. Here's a picture of the passenger side. I still got some touch-ups to do. You'll notice there's a couple of little holes there and some holes there and over there. And I'll show you, I'll tell you why I did those. I got to fill those or, or yeah, I got to fill it up. And I also got to grind down these as well. I'm not the, I'm not the best welder on the planet, but I'm not too bad. I'm not the worst. I'm not the best. Anyways, um, see you soon. Okay, everybody. Uh, looks like the gas line's out. Uh, a couple of rusty bolts, but actually it's in really good shape, to be honest with you. But I'm going to replace it anyways. So a couple of things that I noticed. All right. So back in here. Uh, so the seat bracket or, or whatever. Uh, over here, it's actually welded, not spot welded, right? So there's actually welds there. I think that's factory because it was like that on the passenger side as well. Over here now, you can see the spot welds. All right. Now I've obviously used my center punch, then I used a, a drill, right? Good old drill, and I kind of just drilled into it a little bit, right? Um, now I'm going to use my spot weld remover tool. I got this on Amazon. Um, like I said, this is not too bad. I'll, I'll leave a link for it in the in the description. So my game plan is to take this out. In order for me to do this, I got to hack up this part of the board pan and hack up over here as well the front part of the, the floor pan and this seam for the seat bracket again is spot welded to that bracket down below right um, so it's gonna probably be a little bit of fun for me to separate that but I won't know any well I won't know any better till I start getting into this thing right and I can't see where the spot welds are here because this pan was replaced so there's supposed to be spot welds connecting to the to the frame here uh, there's a frame coming across this way and another one up here, right? Um, so I'm going to have to just cut some of it from below, from up top, keep it kind of clean. Now, back here, when I go to start cutting, how much do I cut off, right? And, and that's always a good question. You can always lay the pan inside, the replacement pan inside the vehicle, um, and mark it out. But I can't do that right now because of the seat pans there, or the seat brackets there. So when I look at the back here, I see there's this curve. And then there's some part of the floor there. Then there's a part over here where we come. And I know that that's a lap joint. Okay, so there'll be spot welds here. So if I go back and I look at that vehicle now, and I actually see the curve portion. So it comes up to about here roughly. Sort of like what you can tell with this little part that I did here, right? Um, so I'll cut it out at the top of this curve. It leaves me lots of space to do a butt joint, right? Um, then, um, when it comes to the, the side part now, when it comes to here, you see this square little indentation, that's for the seat belt, right? So I've kind of got a good amount of information up here, so I'm not going to cut too far. What I'll probably do, if I come back to here, here we go, is I'm going to remove this. There's that seat belt thing I was mentioning before, right? So I'm not even gonna get anywhere near that. I'll probably cut along here, way down, way down in here, way down in here. But once I get this out, I'll be able to lay that pan in, mark a line, and I know exactly where I gotta go, right? The other thing I wanna point out, notice the floor pan here comes up to, there we go, there's the, that's the floor right there. So there's a crease right there. And then this is an extension, a floor extension going up to the firewall, right? Sort of like what's on the passenger side. And I kind of try to keep that. Now, if you look here, see that with the passenger side floor pen, you actually see here's this part that goes straight up right here. So I think the crease is somewhere around here. So I may cut this off. I'll know better once I dig into that and see how much metal is good and how much metal is bad and kind of take it from there. But Apart from that, uh, the next time you should see this, I should have that seat 
pan out and part of the floor gouged out or cut out. Uh, and that's about it here. Here's a picture of the passenger side. It's still got some touch-ups to do. You'll notice there's a couple of little holes there and some holes there and over there. And I'll show you, I'll tell you why I did those. I got to fill those or, or yeah, I got to fill it up. And I also got to grind down these as well. I'm not the, I'm not the best welder on the planet, but I'm not too bad. I'm not the worst. I'm not the best. Anyways, um, see you soon. Okay, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome back. Um, you can see I've actually done some cleaning up over here. Uh, so I got this all kind of cleaned up. You'll see I got my copper well through primer on the top of these because uh, that's where the floor panel meet and I'll plug weld them. A um, couple things that were fun. The floor panel was wedged in between the, the running board here and this uh, extra support bracket you find in the convertible. So I had to kind of dig into there. I don't know if you can't really see it too good on the on the camera, but had to kind of go in there and dig it all out and grind and lots of fun. Uh, I tried to clean out the frames as best I could. Um, and then put some paint in there and rust treatment and whatnot. One of the things I actually did is, uh, again, apart from, you know, wire wheeling and sanding is I used uh, something like this as well for the, for the pits. Crud cutter, the must for rust. This is what we have in Canada. I know there's some other stuff in the U.S. I'm not endorsing the product. I grabbed that at Canadian Tire up here. Um, I tried it out. It's supposed to neutralize the rust. It contains, uh, well, various chemicals, whatever you can do your search. Uh, again, not endorsing the product. I don't know if it works. It seems to work. Uh, you got to clean up a lot of the rust. It's good for this pit, pitted stuff here because it neutralizes the rust and stuff. So, so that's not too bad. So the next thing on the agenda here is to fit the pan. Uh, a couple things I do want to point out. I pointed this out earlier is again you'll notice at the front here let me just get in here the, the original pan came up to here and it was again spot welded in uh the replacement pan i have continues up here uh, called the, i guess the floor extension or whatever i, I kind of want to duplicate the um the, the factory so i'm going to probably cut it off here so what i'll do is i'll, I'll place the pan in uh, i'll go underneath and then i'll mark out this edge right here I'll mark at this edge and then I'll add on what's that maybe an inch and a half I'll add on that and then I'll cut it so it goes straight across now if you notice up here this is where the parking brake goes a little bit of butchery here uh, a bit of rot um, so I'm gonna fix that up that'll be one of the first things I do so I'm gonna do a placement I'll cut out and I can actually use the piece from the replacement product I have to kind of uh, fix this up this is actually not too bad you can see some of that uh, crud cutter stuff here um, so I'll fix that up, put it in, and take it from there. Um, apart from that, again, some cleaning up over here. Uh, once I get it in place, I'll know where I'm going to cut it off, and I'll, I'll bring these back for that. Now, let me just point out something else on the pan. Before I even do any kind of uh, placement, yeah, I'm working on my ATV over there. Blew a brake line. Um, here's the replacement pan. A little, <laughs> little dirty. Um, it's from dust because I've been doing a lot of grinding. You'll see that there's a lip here. Okay, um, this this uh, edge here, this 90 degree edge, I guess it's from uh, the stamping, has to be cut off because this is the part right here. This part gets spot welded underneath the, the running boards. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. Here's that extension I was telling you that kind of slopes up. So I'll be cutting it off uh, again. I'll know better once I get this fitted, but I'm just assuming I'll be cutting it off probably straight across like this, something like that. Um, that's just my guess for now. And then I can reuse this piece over here. I'm hoping I'll do some, um, uh, some stuff on this to uh, hopefully kind of fix that up before I do the complete install. Um, that's about it. This, I believe, is a Dynacorn pan that I bought many, many moons ago. There's some information on it right there. Uh, here's some more information. Again, I got it from Golden Leaf Automotive up here in Canada. Um, I'll leave a link to their, their page. Um, so I believe this is a Dynacorn product. I bought this thing over, it was a long time ago. That's about it. So uh, why don't I get started? Um, and, uh, and I'll bring these back once I'm ready for the, uh, for the fitment. See you in a bit. 